Fed up with the everyday grind? Tired out from the summer heat? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape! Designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are making your painful way over the great India desert, alone and dying of thirst, while behind you, pursuing you, are the fanatical Kafirs who once bowed to you as king and now call for your life. Tonight, we escape to India and two soldiers of fortune who pushed fate too far, as Rudyard Kipling told it in his famous story, The Man Who Would Be King. One Saturday night, it was my unpleasant duty to put the paper to bed alone. It was a pitchy black night as stifling as a night can be in India in June. It was very still, save for the ticking of the clock above my desk, which seemed to shatter the black heat of the night as the hands crept toward 3 a.m. And then from the passage outside my door, I heard voices. Well, who's there? Only us. And who are you? Oh, so you don't remember us, eh? Mm, No, I can't say that... How about the Jodhpur border, then? Job per border. Yeah, and having the authorities turn us back for impersonating newspaper men. Newspaper men? And then there was the train. Yeah, off of which you had us thrown, if I remember correct. Oh, wait. That flaming red hair. That bald head. (laughs) Oh, Daniel Dravot and Peachy (laughs) Carnahan. The same. Well, what do you two want this time? If it's money, I haven't got it. And if it's a fight, it's too beastly hot. You can rest yourself easy, sir, because we have come asking for naught except some information. We've been all over this country, and we've concluded that India isn't big enough for such as Daniel and me. So, we are going away to be kings. Kings in our own divine right. What? Aye, we shall be kings. Yeah, we've signed a solemn contract, each to help the other... And neither of us to look at liquor or women until we have become king. I've never heard of such a fantastic idea. Well, what do you want of me? Naught but a look at such maps of Kafiristan as you might have about. Maps of Kafiristan? That's where we decided to go. Well, don't you realize that not one single Englishman has ever gone into the Kafiristan mountains and lived at Mount again? You're a good deal more likely to become dead men than kings. Yeah, we all shall Anyway, see. I don't believe you have the slightest intention of travelling a mile outside of Delhi. Then you should come down to the Sarai marketplace in the morning, down where the caravans leave for the north. Yeah. Now look, look you two, I'm a newsman, not a nomad. Yeah. Now why, why should I come down to that filthy pest hole? I'm not so sure that you're either. Well, what do you mean? You say you're a newsman, but here's the chance to see the start of the greatest story of all time. And you'd pass it up. Because you're too blasted lazy to get up that early in the morning. Come along, Dravot, me lad. Yeah, but if you should have a change of heart, come to the Serai in the morning and see whether we'd be liars or not. And so they left, those two lovable scoundrels. And I sat alone in my office, thinking. The kings of Kafiristan. <laughs> kings indeed. But then, perhaps, just perhaps, they might pull it off. And it would be something to cable home. And so it was that the next morning I was making my way through the dirty, milling crowds of the Serai marketplace. Oh, thieves, robbers, liars, the blessings of Pir Khan upon all pigs, dogs, and perjurers. <laughs> Who will take the protection? You should not laugh at him, Saib. Eh? The witless are under the protection of Allah. Oh, quite so, boy, quite so. Who is the fellow, anyway? A mad priest, Saib, who has arrived only this morning from Ajmer. Ah, I see, I see. You, Saib, come look at my camels, loaded with toys to please the eye of an army. Yeah, now, now, go about your business. I haven't any use for toys. These are wondrous toys indeed, Saib. Fit for a king of Kafiristan. What? My good lord, Daniel Drevet. Quiet, come along. I have two camels just beyond the wall here. The blessings of Pir Khan on the gracious Sahib who consents to look at the poor toys of a priest from Ajmer. 
Over this way. Where's Conahan? Here we are. Permit me to present my servant, Azamir Khan. At your service, Governor. Well, I'll How do you like be... our disguises? Do they pass? Uh, and if they fool this crowd in the Serai, they're probably good enough to get you across the border. And uh, good enough to get you killed. Yeah, getting killed is no part of the contract Peachy and me drawed up. Although, um, perhaps killing fits in with our plans in a different sense. Feel around underneath the toys there in the camel bags. What? Um, my good lord, the rifles. Twenty brand new Lee Enfields, with ammunition to match. Yeah, and twenty good reasons to make your death certain. Any Pathan of the Hill Tribes would kill his own mother to get a rifle. Now, who would harm? Uh, a poor mad priest, Sahib. Allah protects me. <laughs> mad is right. Uh, then so was Lord Clive, and Rhodes, and Bonaparte. Drive out the camels, Peachy. We have a long way to go before we become kings. Boy, As I stood and listened to the camel bells fade away in the distance, I wondered... I wondered if it might not be a glorious thing to go to Kafiristan and be a king. <laughs> Three years pass in India, much as they pass in any other land. It grows hot, then the rains come, and then they heat again. Some colonel at a hill station puts down an uprising, a new viceroy comes out from London, the paper duly records the death of a sultan in Rajputana, and the trees in the courtyard grow a few feet taller. And finally, time in its circle turned up another night, much like the one three years before. Once again, I sat alone in the office, listening to the clock, and waiting for some unimportant item to come over the wire from Europe. It was long after midnight when my office door slowly opened. Well, I say, you might knock first, you know. Knock. Knock. My good Lord, man. What's wrong? Uh, I... I... Uh... You don't know who I am, do you? No. No, I haven't the faintest idea. Oh, but here, you'd better sit down, old fellow. You're in a bad way. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's a whole year I've been walking. Right here in this very office we settled it. You sitting right there and giving us the maps. <laughs> hey, and you've been sitting there ever since? Three years. No. No, no. Man couldn't change that much in three years. You're not Peachy Carnahan. Yes, I was the king of Kafiristan. Me and Daniel Travert. Real crown kings we was. Just as true as gospel. And what in the name of heaven have they done to you, Peachy? Peachy? I knew Peachy Carnahan once. He's a king. With a, a real golden crown on his head. So help me, he does. He's dead now. No, no. No, no, no. You're Peachy Carnahan. You are. Now, you must pull yourself together. Yes. Pull, pull myself. You've got to keep looking into my eyes. Maybe everything won't go to pieces. All right. All, all right. Now, tell me what happened, Peachy. We left the caravan at Jagdala, and we struck off into the hills alone. Yes. Go on. Weeks it was we travelled, Daniel and me, First, there wasn't no roads, and after a while, no food. But there was always the drums. Sometimes they was close, and sometimes farther off. Most of the time, we could hear them somewhere. Uh, Hold along there! Yeah, now, it's no place to be stopping. Up with you. Well, I'm fearing it's no use, Daniel. What's got into them? Well, the poor beasts are done in and starved, same as ourselves. Don't go no further. Then we'll go on with Adam. I've not come this far to die on the side of a mountain. Hey, wait. Look, Daniel. Over the edge of them rocks. Oh. Uh, oh, men they are. Yes, there's a score or more of them. And one goes ahead of the rest. In naught but bows and arrows. Break out a pair of the rifles, PJ. Right you are, Daniel. It's now that we start to become kings. Here. Here you are. 
And some cartridges, too. Easy now, Peachy. I'll drop the straggler at the rear first. Then we'll lay a few at their feet. No harm to the one in front. We may need him. Now! <laughs> Got him by the old oh! Lay on, Peachy! <laughs> Hold it, Daniel! Look at him! Ah! Flat on the blooming faces. It's their leader. He's coming out alone. Well and good. And we'll go part way to meet him, Beachy. But keep your rifle by. Look at him, Daniel. He's as fair as us, with yellow hair. So he is. Part of the lost tribes these people are. Stopped. I await your command, O ye who speak with the voice of thunder. By the Lord, Harry Peachy, we're in luck. It's the old Afghan tongue he speaks. Speak up. Who are you and whence do you come? I am High Priest and the chief of the village of Bashkai. A journey of only a few heartbeats. This Bashkai, how many people? They are numbered in the thousands. There are more villages in the hills. More than a man has fingers and toes. You hear that, Peachy? Here's our kingdom made to order. And you? You're going to take us to Bashkai, do you understand? I understand the voice of thunder that you speak. Ooh, he's a smooth one, Peachy. He knows a thing or two. <laughs> What's your name? Mazur Khan Jagdalur. That's too long. Hey, well, hey, we'll call him Peachy. He has the look about him of an old soldiering friend of ours. Billy Fish. <laughs> <laughs> so he does. <laughs> hey, we bestow a name on you. From now on, you'll be Billy Fish. And put this on your drums. Tell them two kings have come out of the mountaintops. Two kings that speak in words of thunder, so the earth trembles. Tell them two kings have come to Kafiristan. That's you, Peachy. Uh, Daniel? Why are you sitting out here in the dark? I've been thinking. Man has to stop and think sometimes. Uh, but uh, anything special, Daniel? <laughs> Look at him, Peachy. Look at that blinking campfire as a gleaming in the dark. Like the jewels in the crown. Yes, Daniel. You've done a fine job for sure. All 23 villages you joined together as one. Yeah, it is the army you trained to be thanked for it. 2,000 men with a fair knowledge of better arms. Some of them's a bit green at it yet. Yeah, they're ours now. Every man, jack, woman and child. We own them. Body and soul. Yes. We're kings now, Daniel. Not proper kings yet, but we will be. Yeah, sooner than you think, Peachy. How's that? Now, Billy Fish told me something today that fair amazed me. These people know the craft. You mean they're Freemasons? Daniel, it ain't possible. So help me, it's gospel true. He give the grip and everything. It's old the craft is. Older than the memory of man. And up here in the hills, they've been preserving it all these years. Why, why, some of the high priests know up through the fellow craft, but they don't know the third degree. You see it, Peachy? They don't know the third degree, but we do. And, Daniel, what is it you're fixing to do? Do? We're going to be proper kings. We got them going and coming now. I'm going to turn the whole country into one grand lodge, raise some of the priests to the third degree. And for me, I'll be the grand master of Kafiristan. Ah, no, you ain't got the right to. We've never been officers in no lodge. Right. What's a king got to do with asking for a right? I'm against it, Daniel. It's no good to go fooling around with the craft. Ah, you talk like an old woman. The thing will work. I know it will. We'll make it a blooming ceremony. Regular aprons with the symbols and the marks. All for us, Peachy. The kings of Kafiristan. Everything is prepared, Master. And the priests and the people wait. Well, they haven't much longer, Billy. Yeah, now, Peachy. How do you like my apron? Yeah, it's a wondrous sight for fair, Daniel. Made of white almond skin it is, and the master's mark with emerald studded. The mark? You know the meaning of the mark? That I do. What's got into you, Billy? It is a thing that's passing strange, Master. Yeah, strange and rubbish. Come along now. Ready, Peachy? Right with you, Daniel. Then out we go, onto the temple steps. And we'll give them what for. <laughs> 
Knock the blinking eyes out, that's what we'll do. <laughs> Look at them, Peachy. Right down on their blooming knees and yelling their fool heads off. Oh, it's a good thing to be a king, Daniel. The mark. Behold the mark. It is a sign. The promised ones have come. Yeah, now. What's wrong with the priest, Billy? It looks like trouble, Daniel. No. Stand where you are, master. They recognize the mark. Yeah, that great stone on the floor. Why did they turn it over? Wait. Ah, oh, it's the same. He bears the mark. The promise. Speak up, Billy Fish. What's the meaning of it? See for yourself. Look. Daniel. Carved on the back of the stone. Tis the master's mark, all right. And the same as the sign you wear. Only a few of the priests have known of the hidden mark on the stone. Uh, what does it mean? The many who have doubted you are a god doubt no longer. And you, Billy, what do you think? I, master. I think that now it is the time for these. Ooh, Daniel! Golden crowns! Aye, how they glitter! Fit for the brow of a king! It's what we came for! Here now! Put them on! We'll crown ourselves in our own right! Ah, listen to them! You know something, Peachy? We come here to be kings, and that we are, all right. But blamed if we ain't a couple of blooming gods to boot, with a million people bowing on their knees before us! <laughs> Well enough, Peachy. So it was gods you became, as well as kings. But then what happened? What became of Daniel Dravit? Drav... Dravit? I knew Daniel Dravit once. He's a king now. Daniel is. Where's a golden crown? Carnahan was with him. Peachy. Peachy, try to pull yourself together now. Yes. Uh, I'll try. Good. Good. Now you became kings, you and Daniel. Kings of all Kafiristan. He was a fine figure, Daniel was, with his red head wearing that golden crown. He kept himself aloof from the people, so to speak, and when he walked out in front of the temple, they fared up crawled on their stomachs to worship him. Yes, but what happened, man? What happened? happened? Well, I... I figure mostly it was a winter coming on. The winds were starting up and... Clouds was blowing down from the north. Oh, it could blow beastly cold, that winter wind. Who's out there? That you, Billy? Confound it anyway. Here now, watch this. I, I have brought you food, Master. Stew of the wild sheep with curry and rice. Oh, up off your knees, girl. Bring it inside. Thank you, master. Place it there. Hmm. Ah, no. You're a well-favored wench. I do not understand. Why are you crawling on your knees? It is a fitting way to approach the god of Kafiristan. Mm. What's your name, girl? Marum of Denjab. Marum, huh? You married? It has not yet been my happy fortune, master. You afraid of me? You are a god. Yeah, I mean, uh, how do I seem to you? <clears throat> you find me pleasing or what? Your face... Is more wondrous than the noonday sun. And your look, the look of eagles. <laughs> well, <clears throat> ah, very well. You may leave now. Thank you, Master. Hmm. Mara, hmm. Peachy! Peachy! Oh, was you calling me, Daniel? Oh, the food's here, eh? Ah, good. Mm. Mark that wind outside. 
You know, winter's about due to strike and fill the passes with snow. There'll be little moving about before spring. Yeah, you're right. Peachy, I decided to take a wife. <laughs> But you can't do it, Daniel. We made a contract. That was till we was kings. Well, kings we've been these many months now. Nah, it's no good. I tell you now, I'm against it. Against it? You was against using the craft too, but look what it done for us. This is different. Billy Fish will tell you no, the same as I do. Billy Fish? Eh. Who's the king here, him or me? My mind's made up. Three days from now, I shall have me a wife. And you can put it on the drums and tell every blighter out there in the hills. Kingdom of Kafiristan, it's gonna have a queen. What's keeping her, Peachy? They should have brought her in half an hour ago. I don't know, Daniel. How about you, Billy Fish? You put him up to stolen off, deliberate like. Certain preparations must be made, Master. She's across the court with some of the priests. Maybe they're trying to buck her up a bit, Daniel. She thinks she's going to die, you know. Ah, die indeed. Why, I know. Master, it is against the laws of heaven for a woman to marry a god. I'm not a god, I'm a man. You know that by now, Billy. No, and I should not want to think so, Master. But either way, this can mean only trouble. Uh, I beg you to reconsider. And I beg you to keep your mouth shut, Billy. I'm through waiting. I'm going over there to talk to the police. Master, please. Oh, we've got to go with him, Billy. I think it's going to mean trouble, but come on. How many men can you depend on? No more than 20 with rifles. Most of my men are in Bashkai. Then what shall we do? We shall have to make a run for it, I fear. We might be safe in Bashkai. Oh, now, you bungling fools. Bring out the girl. <laughs> well, now, that's better. Here, girl. This is no way for a bride to behave. Oh, smile now. And give us a kiss. Oh, the wench has bitten me. The blood, Master. Don't let them see the blood. Look! See the blood! It's not a god or a devil, but only a man! Here, blast it! What is this rot? Only a man! Master, it is too late. Back, Daniel, they're coming with knives. They can't do this! I am the king! You must run for it, Master. Come on, Daniel, come on! Confounded Edens. I'll come back. I'll come back and beat the blasted edge in. That's what I'll do. Yes, Daniel. Yeah, we'll be back, all right. <sighs> How much further, Billy? Only a short way beyond this ridge, Master. Well, so far, so good. Huh. At least them blooming drums have stopped. Well, we're at the top, Daniel. Yeah. And a right good climb it's been. Oh. Wait. Uh. Look. It seems the drums have come before us, Master. Cut off. No less than a thousand of them. Standing there quiet like. With them wicked long knives in their hands. There'll be no getting past them, Daniel. No. We're done for. Go back, Billy Fish. Take your man away with you. Go with him, Peachy. It's me they want. I did it. Me, the king. No, Dan. I'm sticking with you. Billy Fish, you clear out. I am your friend. I stay with you. You're a good man, Billy. They're coming now, Daniel. Yeah. Peachy. Forget it, Daniel. I forgive you. Freely, fully. Uh, then let them come. There be one thing they can't change, Peachy. We've been kings. Kings in our own right. Kings of old Kaviristan. Yes. 
He sliced open poor Billy Fish like a blooming earring, I did. There in the snow and the rocks. Oh, good Lord, man. But you, Peachy, you got away from them. <laughs> got away from them, did I? <laughs> oh, no. They strung me out on a tree. They drove nails right through me hands, I did. See, look, oh. see. But I fooled them all right. Because the morning come and I... I wasn't dead. And then I made them think I'd... I'd lost me senses. <laughs> and they was afraid to harm me because I was protected by Allah. <laughs> they cut me down then and... After a while they... They let me go. You poor devil. What of Draven? What happened to Daniel? Daniel? Daniel's a king. He wears a golden crown. No, no, now. Now, what happened to him? He's never left me. All them long months. Walking on the road back, he kept me safe. In the mountains, they danced at night, but Daniel held up his hand and Peachy came along bent double. I never let go of Daniel's hand. <laughs> He's with me now. Here in this bundle. You knew old Daniel, sir, even if it was a monarch once. Look at him now. Oh. Well, now you've seen that we was really kings, or be on my way. You'll pardon me, sir? I let him go. There was little else to do. He was only hours away from his death. I sat there and stared at the bundle he had left lying on my desk. Stared as the pale shafts of dawn struck fire in the red beard. Stared at the golden crown sitting too large and heavy upon the wrinkled, mummified head of Daniel Drabbit the man who would be king. Escape is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald. Tonight we have brought you The Man Who Would Be King by Rudyard Kipling, adapted for radio by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Dunkel. Featured in tonight's cast were Ben Wright and Wilms Herbert with John Daner, Peggy Weber, and Jack Crucian. Special music by Ivan Dittmars. Next week... You are trapped in the dark streets of a French town with only two remaining avenues of escape. The workshop of a fearsome knife maker or the arms of a dangerous woman. While behind you... Hunting you through the dark night swirls a mob of men eager for your capture. Next week, we escape with Vincent Starrett's strange story, The Fugitive. Good night, then, until this same time next week, when once again we offer you Escape. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.